I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review. This is another paid request. This time is from Mega Pork Chop Express. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos or topics, reactions, reviews, whatever, in between, feel free to send them either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the 1987 film, The Hidden, which I know is part of this tube pack with this piece of shit sequel. Now, I believe this does have a Blu-ray from Warner Archive. I just never picked it up. But uh, I do like the film quite a bit. I'm surprised there has not been like an actual special edition. Like the fact is Warner Archive, I think... I know a lot of people, as well as myself, like the film. Think it's a really solid movie, solid sci-fi action movie. And the way it's been treated in a home video is just perplexing to me i mean it didn't do the best in theaters to be fair but it got some video success to make a fucking shitty sequel and i'm surprised someone like stream factory or nvd or these other places arrow video vinegar syndrome they didn't pick up the hidden except just water archive maybe it was their fault i don't know but this is directed by Jack Shoulder, the director of Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge, who later go do Wishmaster 2. In 1982, he had done a film called Alone in the Dark with Jack Palance and Martin Landau, Donald Pleasance. And I think that was one of the first starts with New Line Cinema. And like I said, then he did Freddy's Revenge, Elm Street 2. That, I liked the film. It was successful. That came around 85, and that led him to doing this movie for Dubai Cinema in 87. Now, the original writer was that happy with the film, and in fact had his name changed for it, which I think is stupid. It says, it says written by Bob Hunt. Bob Hunt is not the guy's real name. I think the guy's real name is Jim Kof, K-O-U-F, which he's done some stuff. I think he helped write Stakeout or some other movies. Try to be wrong on that. Don't quote me on that. But uh, this is kind of taking the roller coaster aspect of the Terminator and making this sci-fi action film, this horror film, where you have this alien creature that will jump from body to body, and these two people have to go after it. You have cop Michael Nury, and then you have FBI agent Kyle McLaughlin. Kyle McLaughlin at this time had done the David Lynch film Dune. Later, find success with the TV show Twin Peaks. He was also in Blue Velvet. Michael Nury, I'm not familiar with his other work. I will admit, the first time I saw this, I thought it was Chris Sarandon. And each time, I, I if I quickly look at him, I keep thinking it's Chris Sarandon. 
But oh no, it's Michael Nori. I don't know why. For some reason, he can't remind me of Chris Sarandon, the bad guy in the original Fright Night. And he was also the top in Child's Play. And it has a good supporting cast, including Chris Mulkey, who's the, the first victim, host, however you want to put it, of this creature. Chris Mulkey was in Tom Selleck's film Runaway. He was in Ghost of the Machine. He was in... He was actually in this film for a little teeny bit. The Fan. This is another film we're reviewing. I, I like how simple the beginning is. It was supposed to be a lot more advanced with this robbery. But instead, let's have the security footage where Chris Mulkey goes in, guns down some guards, takes some money. And what I like what they did with the film is that this alien, no matter... What host he's in, he has the same interests of excess, money, fast cars, loud rock music, and speed, fast, 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 fast. And so that made it a bit interesting with who he got in the body of, that he had this consistency to it. I've enjoyed the 80s excess. In a weird way, we enjoy the 80s excess as well. Fast cars and money and... Uh, the only thing missing is hot women, but... I just... You know, it's an alien. Doesn't think humans sexy. You know. In fact, Chloe Christian as a stripper, he doesn't look at her. The only time he looks at her is when, he's got, when she's got like a pile of money around her G-string. And the movie goes by very fast. It's entertaining. It's smart, fast-paced thriller. I agree with that. It's Leonard Moulton. And this is also a film that got two thumbs up from Cisco and Ebert. So critics seem to enjoy it, but it made like nine, ten million at the box office at most. It debuted at like number six, number seven. I don't really know why. I don't know if it was the... I remember liking the trailer, liking the way it was, the trailer was edited. The Hidden, I think the title works for the, the premise. The poster, because this isn't the poster, this is another cover. The poster was pretty much Edel Ross. I like the poster, it's interesting. I don't know if it helps sell a movie though. But this is a movie that definitely used its budget, which its budget was maybe around $5 million, give or take. It used it rather well, because you get some fast, well-done car chases, some nice stunt work. Like when Chris Bolte is driving and runs over these people carrying this glass, and a stuntman takes a really big hit on top of the car, flying over it. Um, this looks absolutely painful. It's got a decent 80s soundtrack. I even like the score. I think the score is rather well done for the film. I forget who did the the, the composing. Uh, Michael Convertino. I don't know what else he's done. Piece of music, as simple as it is, it's the music used in the the score used at the end of the trailer. It's also in this movie when our two characters are in the jail cell and they're getting ready for battle and they're walking side by side with each other and it's a simple du, 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 but du, 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 du. I mean it's simple but it had a little bit of like Terminator vibes and I mean the whole film does have a Terminator vibe not so much plot but just this villain that just will not stop no matter how many times you shoot it no matter how many times you try to stop it it just keeps on going like the fucking Energizer Bunny if you know, Energizer Bunny was a psycho killer. That'd be a movie. But. It has some fun. Effects. 80s style. Like this. What do you call it? Like a slug type of creature. Goes from one body to another. And there'd be quite a few films afterward. That had the idea of the body hopping. Jason Goes to Hell. Which to me. Is a good sequel to The Hidden. Like, 
It's I'm people can hate Jason Goes to Hell all they want. I've seen this piece of shit, and it's better than this piece of shit. But if you want to see a good sequel to the Hidden, go watch Jason Goes to Hell, in my opinion. But it's an interesting idea. The effects work. Uh, the actual creature itself, which you only see a handful of times, I think is rather well done. Practically. Pro nice practical. I forget. I think it was Kevin Yeager who worked on the effects. Who worked on some of the Nightmare on Elm Street films. I think he worked on Elm Street 2, for his revenge. Clue Gulliger, who is the dad in Elm Street 2. He's also Return of the Living Dead. He has a bit role in this film. I said Adel Ross is one of the tops. Like, the tops worked with Michael Nori. This this guy here. Uh, you have... I mentioned Edel Ross. He was the bad guy in Red Heat with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was also in Another 48 Hours. You also have Richard Brooks. He played Rhino, one of the football uh, friends of Peter Bird's character in Shocker. He was also the star of this TV show G vs. E along with Clay Roner. Also known as Good vs. Evil. He's been other stuff too. So again, just a pretty decent cast. You have the buddy cop. You know, not sure how they don't work with each other. I thought Kyle McLaughlin, he did a particularly good job as his character. That's the pretty much wear this mask the whole time. And hide who he is. But then you get some nice, decent emotional moments. Like when he's having dinner with Michael Nori and his Nori's wife and the way Kyle McLaughlin lets out that his wife and daughter were killed by the, the same person that killed his partner I thought Kyle McLaughlin the way he said that was nice emotional core to it it's not overzealous it's not over the top and it just really just makes you feel sorry for the main character makes you feel for him and you talk about a roller coaster type of movie like it starts out with a bane with this robbery and this fun car chase where they just the cops shoot the shit out of it shoot the shit and out of him until he's in the hospital and then with at least each person that possesses how you want to put it they want the car. They want the money. I want this car. It's a Ferrari. And you get some <clears throat> fun, low-key humor out of it. Like, one of the people the aliens possessing... <clears throat> Give me the tease. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> it just shoots them. Fuck you. just gets into the Ferrari car. A Claudia Christian, as a stripper that gets the host... She was in Babylon 5. She was in Maniac Cop 2 after this. And I know there's one point where she was shooting the gun and something happened where it almost blinded her. And that's why she's been unsure on shooting guns later on in movies. But she'd always blink and such just in case. It was nice to see Claudia Christian. I liked her. And she worked rather well. You get another fun car chase. And you know how people complain about car chases. Why don't you just shoot for the tires? Well, they actually employ that in that. You didn't think it's so easy, you do it. And then Kyle McLaughlin <laughs> hits the tire. So, you know, that this movie is a bit smarter than people would think. It's Or would give credit to. Again, why don't you shoot for the tires? They do shoot for the tires. And you did some really good stunt work, like when Claudia Christian has, jumps off the roof to escape Kyle McLaughlin's character. And then the creature goes to the dog, the same dog that would be in Elm Street 4, the Dream Master, the piss of fire. I love Elm Street 4, but that was stupid, but it's the same dog, because he's a New Line Cinema dog. As speaking of which, you got Lynn Shay. she makes a small appearance in this. Sister Robert Shea, head of New Line Cinema. Lynn Shea would be in the Insidious films, among many other flicks. And 
And I don't know, it just it's a movie that keeps going and it never slows down. Or it never feels like it slows down. It's either with these two actors doing a rather good job working with playing off each other as we get to know a little bit more Kyle McLaughlin's character and who he truly is. Or you get, again, the excess of the money and the mayhem that this creature wants to inflict. You get, like I said, car chases, shootouts, like the jail scene. Like when Michael Nuri shoots the alien in the jail and a nice bullet hit in the head that moves the alien. And he's got a fucking bazooka and blows up part of the fucking jail. And there's times you question things, but the movie does answer. Like, there's this old secret weapon. And Michael Nuri's like, why don't you use it? What are you waiting for? He shoots it at Michael Nuri, and it doesn't do anything. And then Tom McLaughlin goes, one composition. Doesn't work on human flesh. That's why he can't use it until it gets the fuck out. And it won't get the fuck out until it absolutely needs to. So that makes it even more of a pain in the ass to stop it. And, spoiler alert, there are some surprises. When you're first seeing this, you're not expecting Michael Norrie's character to get shot. Pretty much die. Although it's very satisfying when Tom McLaughlin gets this flamethrower. Because I'm always up for flamethrower fun. And it's a really cool looking flamethrower too. Yeah, I, I, It's a really cool looking flamethrower. So I'd love to have that. Well... I wouldn't have it because I, what the hell would I would do with it? But I mean, just for like a, another movie, like that kind of flamethrower, another movie, that'd be cool to see. And good flamethrower, I mean, it's really him shooting a flamethrower, real person on fire, good work on the stuntman. Apparently the ending was going to be, well, one ending was going to be that he got away, the creature got away, and Josh Shoulder said, nah, no one wants the alien to win. Thought that was a good choice. But then the Hidden 2 fucked that up. To me, the movie doesn't exist. And then... I guess the the creature, when it got out, it was going to be a bigger creature. And they actually shot it. This footage of them showing the bigger creature. But they thought, ah, maybe it takes away from... Just show, I mean, uh, Kyle McLeod and Diaz's Revenge... Just go more simpler. It gets out. Boom. Blows it up. And I, always, I always thought the ending was a bit weird. I think when I first saw this. Back when I was a. Uh, might have been a kid. I got. I got confused with the ending. Because at the end of the film. Michael Nuri is on the hospital bed. I thought he was dying, and then Tom McLaughlin gave his life source, his like life source, to heal Michael Nori, and so that Michael he gave his life so that this guy could be with his family. He lost his wife and kid. He doesn't want these to lose their father. And so, and the daughter's like, okay, I know something happened with you. No, it's okay. It's okay. That's not the case at all. It's the total opposite. It's Michael Nori dies, and then he possesses Michael Nori's body. I, which I always think is a creepy notion. I know it's meant to be a heartfelt notion, but to me, it's creepy because you're not. Michael Nori did not give you permission to take over his body. Does that mean you don't be fucking Michael Nori's wife? I'm sure he wouldn't give you permission. Hey, yeah, when I die, possess me and fuck my wife. And, you know, raise my daughter as your kid. Like, Michael Nori didn't give his permission for that. And... You... The whole thing just seems creepy to me. And I know it's, that's kind of my big issue with the movie is the ending. It's just... I, I get it. It's, hey, he doesn't want these people to lose their their husband, their, their dad. 
he's going to do that to take care of them. But that doesn't mean he's always going to take care of the wife. And he, the, I mean, it just it just seems like a very creepy, weird. You know what I mean? Like, is he going to be? Was going to be a no sex rule? It's like, okay, I know you're dead, but I'm going to fuck your wife. Many times later, I'm like, that's kind of creepy, kind of creepy, and so that 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 makes the ending kind of. Maybe I'm the only one that thinks that, but the ending kind of bothers me. I would have preferred. I would have preferred. He can't possess people, but there's some kind of thing that he can give his energy, life energy. He'll die, but he got the guy. He got the alien that killed his wife, killed his kid. He fulfilled his purpose. Maybe in the next life, however they view the afterlife, he'll be with them. He's going to give his energy so that Michael Nuri's alive and he could be with his family. I would have preferred that. I think that would have been a better ending. I think that would have been a more satisfying ending. It would have been a lot less fucking creepy. And... That's what I would have done. Like, have it... Where somehow Michael Nori saves Kyle McLaughlin, takes the hit, or like Michael Nori did something substantial to. Because really, you think about it, Michael Nori didn't really do anything to stop the alien, if you think about it. Like, what did Michael Nori really do to help stop the alien? I mean, I guess he put him in jail, but then he got him out of jail, but you put him in jail in the first place. To be fair. I do say he tried to help. That's valiant. But I'm just saying, what did he actually do by the end of it? You know what I mean? Maybe if if both of them helped kill the creature, but then he got shot during it, or he got shot, Kyle McLaughlin to finally finish the job, maybe that would work somehow, some way. Like for example, if they're grabbing Kyle McLaughlin and he needs the the flamethrower or the weapon, like he needs the weapon. Or, or something, and Michael Nori gets in the weapon, but he gets shot, but he gets him what he needs to, or something, I don't know, I don't know. Or maybe Kyle McLaughlin uses the flamethrower, and Michael Nori shoots it, or Michael Nori sh uses the flamethrower, and then Kyle McLaughlin shoots it. And blows it up. And they work as a team. And then somehow Michael Nuri gets shot. For doing the right thing. And then what that happens. I, I just. There's a little bit more to the finale. I, I love this moment. Don't even remember. I love this moment. And part of me is like. Okay I like Kyle McLaughlin shooting the flamethrower. But then it's like. Well. Michael Nuri's character. Maybe a little bit more for him. To do. For, for merit and worth. But I don't know. That's. Just me being silly, I guess. I don't know. So again, just little issues with the 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 third act, the finale. But overall, it's it's a fun roller coaster. It's fast paced. It's got some rocking tunes. It's got some good stunts and car chases. It's got an interesting idea. It's got two solid performances by the lead lead characters. Some nice supporting work. And overall, it's a fun movie, The Hidden. Like I said, I'm surprised this doesn't have... Like, a, like this has a couple features. Commentary with Jack Shoulder. A little bit of production footage. But the Bells and Whistles Blu-ray, I'm surprised this never got. Again, it is on Blu-ray on Warner Archive. I don't even know if that has the features from this. I don't know. But, uh... 
maybe one day I'll pick it up just so I don't need this stupid fucking sequel. And the fact it's on one goddamn disc, so it's just gotta share it. Thus, the picture quality is a little bit lower. Fuck. Like, come on. Like, you can't even get two discs. Like, fuck. Anyway. Hidden. Pretty damn good flip. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.